everybody, it's Shelby Miller with Keller Williams Realty Group and I am here with Tony Dominguez with Integra Home Inspections. So Tony, septic systems, oh my gosh, they are a buyer's worst fear of anything that they do. I have so many buyers that don't even want to look at a home if it has a septic and it's not public. So yes, they can be scary, but can you kind of explain the different types of septic systems that there are out there and what each kind of does a little bit? We don't want to overwhelm them, but we want to sure. make sure that they understand that you can buy a house that has a septic system. Sure. And it's understandable to be afraid of purchasing a home with a septic because it can be a very huge cost to replace that septic if it's not working properly. It could be in well into the tens of thousands of dollars sometimes. So um, the most common septic types you're going to run across are your standard in-ground systems. When you walk up to a house, you don't see anything in the yard except for maybe the lids on the tank. Uh, there is the sand mound, which is very obvious because it's a mound in the yard. And you know, if you go to an old farmhouse style or something built um, maybe even in the 40s or earlier, you may have a cesspool. Um, I do see some reservations sometimes with buyers that they don't like sand mounds because it's an unsightly mound in their yard. I will say from an inspector standpoint that I would prefer a sand mound over any other type right now because really? it has the, it's, it's probably the most reliable or the type that we see the fewer issues with. Okay. Or the issues that we do see are much more easily corrected. It could be things as, you know, just like replacing a pump or fixing an alarm or, you know, worst case scenario, you have to redo some piping in the, uh, in the, in the drain field. But generally, uh, the mounds last a lot longer. Okay. So um, the cesspools, those are non-conforming systems, but they are allowed to stay as long as they're functioning. So what exactly is a cesspool? Explain, and that just the word sounds yes. scary, doesn't it? <laughs> so it's, it's an old term and it basically resembles an old hand dug well. It's something that can vary. I've seen them as narrow as about 18 inches in diameter to about six or eight feet in diameter. And they're lined with uh, loose fitting stone or masonry blocks, sometimes brick. And it has a lot of space in between. So essentially you're your typical system uh, with a cesspool has, doesn't have a drain field. So your cesspool is both your solids tank and your drainage. So okay. the solids settle at the bottom and then the water seeps out uh, through the walls. The concern with cesspools, one is structurally, uh, are they still able to hold their shape because right. they can collapse. And also, depending on how deep they are, they can sometimes um, contaminate your well water. Um, because you are deeper and you're closer to that water table, you don't have all that filtration of the soil in between that you do with a standard system or a sand mound. So I heard you also mention a drain field. What exactly is a drain field? So a drain field, or the technical term you'll hear us use during an inspection or in the report, it's called an absorption area. Right. So that is basically where the effluent or the liquid that leaves your tank um, soaks into the ground and gets filtered through the soil before it returns back to the water table. And that could be just a rectangular excavation that has about 10 to 12 inches of stone, crushed stone, with a network of pipes where the water just filters out through the stone into the soil. Could be your sand mound, uh, which is still your crushed stone, but with three to four feet of sand typically underneath. It filters through the sand and then into the soil. Um, and then there's definitely some other alternate systems that are out there. <laughs> I um, bet you've seen a few. <laughs> yeah, there's a few. There, and there's even some rare, what's called uh, direct stream discharge systems. Okay. Um, those are definitely a little more involved um, as you, as a homeowner, maintenance-wise, because you do have to test the discharge regularly. Uh, there is some disinfection units and filtration before it gets discharged into a, a stream or a waterway. Uh, but those are rare. Okay. We don't see those that often. Um, there's also um, a few other ones like a uh, drip systems or spray irrigation systems. Again, those are more just commercial systems. We don't see those too often in residential. Okay. And one last question before we go is how often should a homeowner empty their septic tank? The best maintenance you can do with a septic system is regular pumping. Uh, we typically recommend about a three-year um, interval, three-year period. Some areas do have uh, regulations uh, in place where you are required to pump it. Sometimes I've seen as few as every two years and in my township, Lower Mukunji Township, I'm only required to do it every five years. I definitely would not go over five years. Right. Okay. 
So guys, obviously there's still probably a lot of questions that you might have in regards to different types of septic systems and if there's a preference for you if you're looking to buy a home. So if you want to ask Tony some questions, his number's at the bottom of the screen, give him a call, then call me. We'll get you set up with a home search and we'll make sure that we're searching for that septic system the right way. Thanks for watching, guys.